To the best of your ability, focus on the most diversity you can. I think there's extreme value in considering to start a small permaculture nursery to either raise more plants for your own purposes to save money, but I also think it's a really viable way to have a small side income or perhaps an entire income for a family or a collective. The demand is immense, the need is huge, and the ways of entry are quite easy. And my name is Sean Dombrowski and I have been developing the Edible Acres project for almost 20 years now and this is a perennial plant permaculture nursery that uh, has focused on almost entirely hand tools, very low technology, very low complexity and very low cost. I'm really excited to share what I've learned over the years with folks around how to develop a nursery either in a small landscape or on a large space or even in places where you may need to move in a year or so. Growing plants for sale or for home use can be really rewarding and enjoyable. In week one, we will look at how a permaculture nursery can be integrated into an existing garden or an existing landscape or farm. In week two, we will take a deeper dive and look at all the different tools that we work with. In week three, we'll learn propagation specifics. Finally, in week four, we'll learn how to put this all together so you can take direct action on what you've learned and also how you can further your education. This is part of the nutrient flow, the, the nutrient pump for our nursery operation, for our home gardens, for our potted plants, on and on. We can grow carrots and beets, some nursery crops, maybe some greens that are gonna go back to the hens. I think there's extreme value in considering to start a small permaculture nursery to either raise more plants for your own purposes to save money. It can be prohibitively expensive to buy plants retail and bring them into a system. But I also think it's a really viable way to have a small side income or perhaps an entire income for a family or a collective. A typical year in the Edible Acres lifestyle includes the collecting of seeds from wonderful wild plants that we can use to propagate but also eat from. So we collect nuts in the fall that we save to grow and we also eat ourselves. Um, we do a huge amount of uh, cloning work in the form of taking cuttings from plants like elderberries and currants and sticking them in the ground in the fall and the spring. We also ship plants, so late fall and early spring we're very busy digging up dormant trees and plants wrapping them and shipping them to folks. It's a very full lifestyle with a nice gentle lull in the middle of winter and in the middle of summer, but the days can be packed. It's quite rewarding and also physically pretty demanding when we're doing it mainly by hand, but I wouldn't trade it out for anything in the world. The wider a net you cast genetically or species-wise, the more likely it is that things will work out. We tend to have pretty significant failures periodically, but because we work with so many plants, we keep busy working with uh, what has worked out. But if I was honed in on one thing and that failed, it would be pretty devastating. So keep it wide and keep it generalist, and it seems to work out really nicely. Something that's been very surprising to me over the years is just how tolerant plants can be in proximity how very close trees can grow next to one another, how tightly herbaceous plants can work near one another. The amount of cooperation uh, and mutualism that plants can demonstrate in high density is pretty astonishing and really pleasing. We have been using collected rainwater and uh, small hand dug ponds as our irrigation source for almost 20 years now. And over the years, we've figured out some nice systems of making this very low-tech and borderline passive system a little bit more functional for ourselves. For example, here's this um, metal tank along with our dog. Um, here's a metal tank that we use um, where our rainwater collection, which happens right off the roof of our home, it's a very simple tube that runs into a large tank with a very, very simple filter. And that tube can run over to this tank 
where we have a float valve that as the water level goes lower and lower, it dips down. This is not unlike a toilet bowl float valve. And when the water's full, it turns it off. And so we have this system that keeps these containers nice and full and then allows us to dip in. We've got our handy rainwater watering can holder. And so long as there's an average amount of rain throughout the year, we can do all the watering we need by hand but in a way that's pretty straightforward and with very, very little complexity. A number of years ago, we spoke with our neighbor and were able to figure out a really nice way to expand our garden. So I'm now leaving our quote unquote land and entering their land. But what's lovely with this sort of work is the line between all of this has become incredibly blurry. And so now we're gardening and farming in their landscape they come and go and harvest from our space and we harvest from theirs. And there's a lot more continuity of uh, production that's happening. This is all actually in the last few years. We've taken the knowledge that we've gained exploring and making tons of mistakes in our own space and we're able to apply them in a much more thoughtful way into this space and get it working a little bit faster. This is a very wet site just like ours is. And so we've leaned heavily into those casts of perennial characters that thrive with wetness. So this is a pond. We rented a pretty large excavator for a few days. It's a pretty heavy duty impact, but uh, allowed us to create a pond that is spring fed. It's ice cold, borderline drinkable water in there. And the topsoil from this excavation is what facilitated the high tunnel that we established. This is also a source of water for our farming, for our nursery work. It's also a place of recreation and we can dip a toe literally and figuratively into the realm of exploring perennial aquatic high value plants like arrowhead, water lotus, kamas, all sorts of different plants that if we didn't have a, a nice body of ice cold water to work with and the margins thereof, we'd be a little bit boxed out. We're out on our neighbor's lawn here where we're slowly helping him remove the lawn and turn it into garden beds. And the way we're doing it is by uh, first deploying air prune boxes for a season. And this is something that I've come to really appreciate as a mechanism for growing trees from seed. So they're out here, I think there's 11 or so, uh, uh, two foot by four foot boxes. They're about 18 inches deep or so. And in each box, there might be anywhere from 150 to 300 seedling trees that will grow this year. This box may very well have around 200 or so hazelnuts that will grow this year. And these boxes have just a little bit of a gap between the bottom of them and the earth below. It's a metal mesh. And so the root of the tree grows down, grows down, grows down, hits that air and is pruned, the air prune box. And what it does is it takes what would otherwise be a single long scrawny tap root and helps the, the young tree develop more lateral roots. So it cuts that first one with the air and then more start to form. And you get this incredibly bushy, vigorous, healthy, uh, root system in the first year of growth. The beautiful part is when we're ready to harvest these trees, we can take the caps off and disassemble the beds bit by bit, pull all the trees out and then leave this soil here. We'll mulch in between these when we have some time to suppress the grass. And by the time these leave from here, this will be a permanent raised bed area in the fall. In exchange, we'll get a few thousand trees that we can sell or we can plant and our neighbor will have an expansion on his garden. These have been incredibly useful to us. I can't wait to share more detailed notes with folks about this pretty much very low tech, but very effective use of technology uh, for nursery aspirations. I am excited to spend the next four weeks with you folks sharing what we've learned over the years in developing our perennial plant nursery. Uh, low tech, no tech, very accessible, simple ways to propagate many, many plants, either for your own purposes or for developing a small business. I'm really excited to get into it with you and share some good time.